so there you have it. Mumbai have won their 42nd Ranji title, extending their ridiculous streak. Now, I think Karnataka is second with eight. So, Ayaz has a lot to talk about in the final, but I want to specifically talk about two players on either side of the spectrum. So, let's start off with the veteran, Dhawal Kulkarni, who announced a re retirement after the final and he was carried off the field on the shoulders of his teammates. And uh, though he's played a few matches for India, I think he's mostly remembered for uh, those several IPL seasons with multiple teams and his uh, innings with Mumbai, which I think started in 2007. So, uh, fitting farewell to a Ranji legend. Oh, absolutely. And, I, you know, I just want to kind of emphasize, Anirudh, that these are the kind of players who make domestic cricket so important. Uh, you know, I can talk of Amol Majumdar, for instance, also from yeah. Mumbai. Yeah. Never played for India. But the contribution to Indian cricket through what he, he did for Mumbai and West Zone and rest of India and so on and so forth is humongous. So, to Dhawal Kulkarni. I mean, if you look at, you know, what did he do for India, you might find it blank. But what he did for Mumbai has been terrific. And to finish this, you know, his, his swan song was in, in, in a victory, I think was fitting tribute to what he's put in the effort. It's not easy uh, to, you know, to retain your zest and your your commitment and your, your you know, your focus for so long because everybody aspires at this level. Once you've reached the first class level, you want to be playing for India. You want that cap. And if it's season after season, you, you are so close to getting it, putting your hand onto it or getting it on your head and then you miss it. There is a level of frustration that can creep in. But, uh, you know, hats off to Dhawal that he's continued uh, the way he did season after season. And he's finished the final in a very productive way, not just being part of the winning team, but contributing a lot to the victory. Yeah. Uh, now, for the second player, which is a relative newbie when it <laughs> compared with the likes of Kulkarni. I'm talking about Mushir Khan, who represented India in the Under-19 World Cup, is the younger brother of Sarfaraz Khan and also became the youngest to uh, score a century in a Ranji final, I think, after Sachin Tendulkar. So, what do you make of this new talent? Well, you know, I mean, look, the Khan brothers are going to make waves. They have started making waves in Indian cricket. Yeah. Sarfaraz has been around for a few years. He's older by, I think, six, seven years. Uh, and, you know... One has heard about Mushir uh, through the years. Ever since Sarfraz got into the limelight, there was also talk and speculation about Mushir because father, the father has coached both of them. And he was, I think, he was more keen uh, or he was more uh, convinced that the younger son had more talents. It seems to be because he also bowls. And he's been picking up because yeah. he bowled very well in the final two. He's bowled well in the Under-19 World Cup. So, yes, in that sense, this final has been, as you mentioned, Dawal Kulkarni at the other end, at one end of the spectrum, finishing his career with a win. And Mushir Khan in his first season for Mumbai, uh, he just come back after a successful campaign in the Under-19 Cup. And then he's here in the, in the first season, making a century in the final, uh, breaking the great Sachin Tendulkar's record. But that's not of the, uh, you know, to me, the, the critical part that he broke Sachin's record. Yes, that's a landmark. But the kind of you know, the, there is a certain rootedness and a certain flavor about Mumbai cricket which is coming through in Mushir Khan. There is a certain, uh, you know, as they say, it is very popularly used that word. It's almost a cliche that Mumbai players are khadus, which means that once they get in, they don't want to come out of the field and they don't want to give a quarter to the opponents. And that's what, those are the qualities that Sarfraz has shown for many years as have so many other Mumbai players and Mushir has also shown this at a very young age. So, I think that, you know, when you look at players like Mushir and some of the others who've been there, Tushar Desh Pandey, you realize that Mumbai, what makes Mumbai still such a formidable force. They've won the 42nd title, but it's come, it's taken eight years yes. from the 41st to the 42nd. So, there's a lot of work that has gone in, a lot of frustration, a lot of heartburn over the last eight years, lots of disappointments. But now it seems that you know, Mumbai has found its mojo again. Yeah. Uh, so, from first-class cricket, we now move on to T20 cricket with the Women's Premier League. So, it's heading towards the finish line now. Uh, Delhi Capitals already in the final and uh, RCB and MI play each other to find out who goes up against uh, Delhi Capitals. So, as having seen the season so far, have you noticed any difference from the first season? I mean, have you noticed that the crowds are bigger or the matches are closer? I mean, the, fir the first match was a nail-biter. So, I mean, we... Uh, seen uh, all the the expected names are on the top of the list with the Shafali Varmaj and your Beth Moonies and with the bat and all. So, what difference have you seen in this season? Well, the difference the difference is obviously in the number of people who are coming to watch the matches. You know, last year it was all all the matches were played in Mumbai, uh, and 
this year it's, it's been divided between Bengaluru and Delhi. So, you know, to, to see crowds coming at both the venues is a, is a very healthy sign because it shows that women's cricket has found acceptance across, you know, you can, wherever the footprint is of cricket in India. And it's not just about men's cricket, we all know. So, there is a certain loyalty also emerging for Mumbai. If Mumbai, Mumbai women's team plays in Mumbai, you'll find big crowds. So, too, as it's happened in Delhi and in Bangalore. Now, I think, and, and you mentioned, you know, that the big names have all done well, uh, including, let's may name the Indian players. I mean, you know, somebody like Harman Preet Kaur, she has had some stellar knocks, Smriti Mandana. We've had some cliffhangers, we've had some nail-biting finishes, we've had, overall, the cricket has been riveting. And I think that even from a broadcast point of view, I don't have the figures with me, but the television audience has been pretty good. So, it shows that it's not dependent only on the... Uh, Patronage of the BCCI can by tournament rakhna. I think it can hold its own women's Premier League. There are two concerns though, I must mention here. One is that you need more teams. You know, right now, I think there is a paucity of teams. But you can only get more teams if you have more players. So the, you know, the women's cricket in a sense is hampered by the absence of high quality players because it's not, the base of the pyramid isn't large. Now that base has to expand globally. And certainly so in India, because if the WPL is going to be the kind of a showcase event in the in the calendar like the IPL is, then it will demand more Indian players. Each of the franchises, if you take the IPL rules, will have to play seven in a team, in a, in a match, seven Indian players. Now, if you have, say, eight teams, then you need at least 56 minimum to play, but 65, 70 to be in a part of the squad and then you add on the, the overseas players. So those numbers are something that need to be, you know, they need to be sought sought after by the administration, by cricket, you know, the, the people who are supporting the sport. And I think that's where the BCCI should be focusing attention, providing more opportunities for the already established players to play and therefore they become role models for the others to follow. And then creating an environment where there's a lot more junior cricket and there's a pipeline where they can where they can travel travel through to come at the come to the higher levels. Yeah. And uh, before anyone corrects me in the comments, I Deepti Sharma has been the standout Indian player of the tournament, bat and ball. And also Meg Lanning is the top scorer. I know I looked it up. And uh, she's also captaining the Delhi Capitals, which brings me to the men's captain of the Delhi Capitals, which is uh, great news is that Rishabh Pant has been cleared and he'll be playing the IPL starting next week. And he seems to be uh, in a cheerful mood, looking forward to it because I saw him on a podcast with Adam Gilchrist and Michael Vaughan. He He's won. putting out reel after reel, Anirudh, on social media. There's a reel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's going slam bang with his... Uh, and I think he's overjoyed. I think he's so happy yeah. just to yeah. be back yeah. on his feet, running around, holding bat in hand, tonking the ball. You know, and he's a young guy. You can, uh, you, you know, yeah. one can sense or one could sense the disappointment of him missing out on big cricket. It was such a big year for India, missing out on the World Test Championship, yeah. the World Cup, and so on. And now he's on the threshold again. He's going to play the IPL. A little, you know, I mean, maybe you know better. Uh, is he going to keep wickets as well as bat? Uh, what I read somewhere is that he might have a slightly different yeah. role from the previous year. So, is he going to not keep yeah. wickets just to kind of preserve his, you know, or at least not make sure that there is no pitfall in his recovery? There could be. I mean, they brought in a couple of keepers in the mini auction. So, uh, there was talk that he might be used as an impact player or maybe he'll start keeping towards the end of the tournament. But we never know. I mean, he seems fit to go. So, uh, everyone just has their fingers crossed. Just no, want, no, I think, maybe, I, I think you're right. Like I think they'll build him up. I mean, you know, they'll, they'll blood him into yeah. the or They'll bring him back into the team, obviously, and see how he fares. Because ultimately, they, the team also enters the field to win. And you don't want to take a chance yeah. and imperil your own prospects as well as that of the players by rushing into things. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's it for this uh, episode of Sports Room. We'll bring you the IPL coverage which starts next week. And the only question I have now is whether Rishabh Pant's return will get a bigger roar than uh, Thala's return. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a sense, Virat Kohli also returns to, you know, big-time action yeah. after, after missing the entire yeah. series against England. So, there's a lot to look forward to when the IPL yeah. starts. Yeah, and we'll bring you all the action. And so that's it for this episode. And, and, and before I sign off, before we sign off, and also Rohit Sharma yeah, not, yeah, cap oh. not captaining Mumbai and playing, you know, yeah, that is the big thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's lots, lots to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, lots to unpack. Yeah. So yeah, that's it for this episode of Sports We'll see you next time. Yeah.
Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Anirudh.